I've been using Windows 11 for a little over two months now, and there are some things that I really like about it and some things that I'd like to see improved. Early adoption of anything basically guarantees that you're going to run into some issues. And I've heard many people complaining about Windows 11 regarding performance issues with AMD when it first launched, games and battery life on laptops running less efficiently, the HDR setting turning the monitors off, and even locking your computer unless you power it off and back on again. And so far, I haven't run into any issues like this. Now, I did make an introduction video to Windows 11 where I talked about the things that they've added and changed since Windows 10. I have my pros and cons in there, so I'm not going to be talking about Windows snapping, rounded corners, and multiple displays in this video. I mostly want to talk about the things Windows 11 needs to improve and also show you how to disable Microsoft spyware that they're always shoving into their newest operating systems. So, let's start with some things that I disliked about Windows 11. Now I did talk about this one in my last video, but this bothers me quite a bit. See, I wanted to put Windows 11 on my media PC downstairs. The only issue is my media PC has a Ryzen 7 1700 CPU, which is out of date hardware apparently, and I also don't have a TPM 2.0 switch. The reason they want this TPM switch is apparently for heightened security, which kind of makes sense, but they also require you to have a motherboard that supports EUFI, so that you can use Secure Boot. The weird part is you don't actually have to have Secure Boot running on Windows 11. It's not an actual requirement. So these specs feel like Microsoft just wants you to go out of your way to update your system. If you want Windows 11, you can't use that perfectly capable first-gen Ryzen CPU. So what, you want me to sell it? To who? I can't sell the Ryzen chip to any of my friends who want Windows 11, and that leaves me throwing a perfectly good CPU away? This processor would easily run Windows 11, but Microsoft decided that this is a necessity, so I'm not allowed to have the new version of Windows on that system. Honestly, that's Microsoft's loss. I'm definitely not throwing out a perfectly good CPU just so I can have access to their new OS. It's just not worth it, and I'm willing to bet Microsoft is likely going to roll back on this requirement once they realize not many people are adopting their newest OS simply because of these ridiculous hardware requirements. In case you're curious, the requirements are a 2nd gen Ryzen CPU or higher, an 8th gen Intel CPU or higher, you need a TPM 2.0 switch, and then you have to have an EUFI capable motherboard in order to access Windows 11. The next thing that's really annoying is setting your default browser. This used to be really easy on Windows 10. Just set it once and you're good. Now you have to set it for every individual thing. I mean, I get giving more options to the consumer, but this doesn't feel like options. It feels like they're trying to force you to use Edge. And check this out. If you open Edge once, it asks you to switch the default to that. If you say yes, it automatically switches every setting back to Edge. So you have to do it all over again. What the hell, Windows? Now, Windows has always been a bit forceful, loves shoving ads and crap down your throat, but the Microsoft account isn't skippable anymore if you have the home version of Windows 11. Now, the pro version lets you skip the account, but if you have home, you're forced to sign in and use your Microsoft account, so the trade-off is basically $100 gives you your privacy. Otherwise, Windows is going to take all your data for using the home edition. Great. Now, there are ways to get around Microsoft spyware, and I'll be showing that off very soon. There are some other smaller things that I dislike, one of them being the taskbar. You can't move it around the screen anymore, so if you liked it on top or the side of your screen, you're screwed. They also removed the taskbar options, like finding task manager by right-clicking. I had to add the task manager to my start menu so I can access it easier. I mean, you can always use control shift escape to open it, but for me it was always easy to right-click and then it's right there. Now all you get is taskbar options which aren't very useful after the first time you go in and optimize these to your liking. The clock on multiple displays is also gone, which is annoying. I liked being able to play a game and look over at my other monitor and know exactly what time it was at a glance. I really hope they add this back. They also added widgets in here, and they're so useful I disabled them and haven't looked back. It's just bloat, and who knows, maybe one day this window will be worth using, but I haven't seen a reason to mess with it yet. The next issue I have is very annoying to me, and I haven't seen anyone else talk about it yet. Maybe it's just a me thing, but in other versions of Windows, I used to be able to grab a file, drag it over the program I was using, Windows would open the program, and then I could input the file and go to work. This was very useful for Photoshop and Sony Vegas when I was trying to get stuff from my desktop into the program. 
Well, you can't do that anymore. If you want to drag something into a program, you have to shrink the program, grab the thing, drag it in, and then maximize the program. I miss my hover to open apps feature, and I want this back more than anything. It's a small thing that cuts down on my workflow, and it's really not a big deal, but damn, I miss it. This next thing I talked about in my last video, but the start menu. It's really pretty, sure, but there's a lot of wasted space here, mostly with this recommended section. The recommended section highlights apps that you may want to use or use the most, but if I'm working on something private, it'll bring it to the forefront of the start menu, so that's not helpful. If you disable the recommended tab, it does go away, but it leaves this blank space here. Why? Just open that space up for more programs I want to use, right? Why in the world would you show me the recommended after I turned it off? I'm the one who disabled it. I know what it's supposed to do. Right-clicking the desktop is also a bit of a mess. Everything you needed used to be right here with one click, but now you've got the first right-click, and then some of the options, and yeah, there are more options in here, but there's also a repeat of the last menu. They have new in both menus. They have open in Windows Terminal in here twice. Next desktop background is in here twice, and I don't see why they didn't just scrap the second menu and just throw everything into the initial right click. There's really no reason for this, and it just leaves things kind of messy. The last annoying thing is actually an issue that I had on Windows 10 as well. In earlier versions of Windows, the search bar was great. I wanted to find a specific folder in my computer that had photos or videos that I needed, and I opened them right up. Now, if I'm searching for a specific folder, it takes me to Bing. What? Who in the hell is going to go to their web browser to find files on their computer? It would just be nice if Microsoft gave us the option to choose where we want to search for stuff. Like, if I use the search function and it let me decide if I wanted to only search my PC, search the web, or both. The search function for me would only be useful for finding stuff specifically on my machine. That's just my preference. And this Bing search crap makes the search function basically useless unless I'm looking for a program that I want to use. Seriously, if I want to search the web, I'll open my browser. Isn't that just common sense? Now, there are some things that I do like about Windows 11, and I talked about a lot of them in my initial video. I like the rounded corners. I love the look of Windows 11. The snapping feature is gorgeous. Basically, everything is beautiful now, and they really did add a ton of improvements to the settings menu, multiple desktops, and the sidebar without removing the functionality of the control panel, task manager, and other more in-depth programs that you might still use. The thing is, I already went into all of that in my last video, so I've only really found one new thing that I think is really cool about Windows 11, and that is the terminals. So if I wanted to open a terminal and lead it to a specific directory, you'd have to input that whole directory to get to that folder. Now you can just open the folder you want, right click in the folder and open the terminal from that directory. And if you've ever had to troubleshoot your PC before, this is a huge step in the right direction, especially since you can access a bunch of different terminals right from this new app. You've got the command prompt, you've got PowerShell, you can download different terminals online and add them to this list, and even open multiple instances of them in a clean space. Not only that, but you can also run a Linux kernel straight from the command prompt. Just download whatever kernel you want, like Ubuntu, install it through the terminal, and there you go. You can learn Linux directly from Windows without having to sideload it or dual boot into it. This is nice, especially if you are using Secure Boot on your new Windows 11 PC, dual booting is going to be more difficult for you. I'm glad they did this, and I'm sure a lot of Linux users out there will find this useful. This is the part of the video where we get into the spyware removal aspect of Windows 11. Microsoft wants your data. They want to rip every inch of your soul from your body and absorb it into the cloud and hold you hostage forever, and if I were Alex Jones, that might have sounded a bit more serious. Honestly, I just don't like Microsoft having all of my information, and there are a few things that we can do to stop them from accessing it. The first thing is the Diagnostic Data Viewer. If you go to this link and sign into your Microsoft account, you can see what kinds of information they have in their servers. You then have access to remove all of this information. You can go in and delete everything, and this actually removes it completely from their servers, which is cool that they allow you to do this. You can also use the Diagnostic Data Viewer to see what your computer is sending to Microsoft. Just go to Settings, Privacy and Security, Diagnostic and Feedback, View Diagnostic Feedback, and from there you can open the Data Viewer to see what Microsoft is getting from you. You may have to download this tool from the Windows Store, but it's another neat program, and I'm glad Microsoft is being so transparent about what they're taking. 
Now, to stop Microsoft from taking your data, the biggest thing you can do is set up your PC as a local account only. This will turn off the cloud, so if you use the cloud a lot, this may not be a good idea for you. You'll also lose access to the Windows Store. Me, I don't use the cloud or the store almost ever, other than getting the Diagnostic Feedback app, so I'm okay with losing these. All you have to do is go into Settings, Accounts, Your Info, and then use Local Account instead. Next, we can go to Settings, Privacy and Security, and in here we have a lot of options for what Microsoft is allowed to take. If you go to Windows Security, Virus and Threat Protection, and then Manage Settings, you can turn off Cloud Delivered Protection and Automatic Sample Submission. These send protection data back to Microsoft. Microsoft then uses them to tell you if you're visiting a malicious website or if you're downloading something that's potentially dangerous, but if you're a competent Windows user, you're going to be fine without their help. Then you have Find My Device. This lets you track your phone, tablet, laptop, or anything else that might get lost or stolen. But it also gives Microsoft your location, and if you don't want that, you can turn that off. If you go to General, you've got the option to turn off personalized ads, language lists, and start and search results. All of this is being used to target ads directly to you, specify your preferred language for websites, and lets Microsoft know what programs and apps you use the most. You can also turn off suggestions and settings, but any of these can also be useful to you, so that's up to you if you want to disable them. Under that, you have speech and inking. Turning these off will stop sharing your data with websites. All of this is designed to get you the best search results based on how you ask questions, but they're not necessary and you'll get a bit more privacy without them. Then you have diagnostics and feedback. Now, there's a category which requires some data to be sent to Microsoft, and you can't turn this off. This is mostly regarding the hardware that you're running, so it's not very personal data in the first place. Optional data, however, can be turned off. This includes data like the apps you launch, the websites you visit, so yeah, I'm going to be turning that one off. The last place you want to visit is App Permissions. This gives you some of the most control as far as data sharing. You can go into every individual app here and allow or deactivate access to sharing information. Apps like Google Chrome would need your location for Google Maps, but apps like Microsoft Teams and 3D Viewer do not need to know where you're at in order for the application to run properly. This will take the most amount of time for you, but going in here would definitely be worth it if you're not a fan of a bunch of different apps having access to your microphone, location, camera, and so on. And with all that taken care of, you should be all set. Windows 11 has a lot of potential. It's a beautiful operating system, and the updates are frequent, so I imagine a lot of the issues that I brought up will be ironed out eventually. I just hope Microsoft's listening to the people and what they're complaining about. Every time I make a video on a Windows operating system, I always have people in the comments telling me that I need to get Linux. Barry, you have to try it out. You'll never go back. And perhaps that's true. I could build my own operating system. I wouldn't have to go into the settings and rip the company's hands off my information. The only thing is, uh, I mean, this is going to sound crazy, but I've heard that you can get an illness from using Linux. And I think it's terminal. <laughs> Until next time.